Here's a still life I did on the 11th of November, 2023. Uh, I've been doing a series of a la primas where I invite people out to chat with me and ask questions and just, you know, just generally have fun. I like painting. Uh, I like critiquing. So, you know, we just have a good time. We might even get off topic with, you know, non-art things, but hey, you know, it's, it's meant to be a, a fun event. So here I am trying to just get a sense of my composition. I made plenty of mistakes and that's kind of the point. That's why I keep things so simple. I like to see it. I don't want to just kind of assume uh, everything's going to fit just the way I want, even if I have a really good plan or even a thumbnail sketch, which I like to do for very complicated paintings. It's like still, once you see it, you make better decisions. So uh, I like to keep things very simple. I don't really need it to look like the finished product. I just have to have an estimation in place that has a certain proportion to it. It occupies a certain amount of space, it leaves negative spaces, which are, when you consider everything in abstract elements, everything just fits. Um, it doesn't matter really what it is, or if it's the focal point, or like, you know, this is important, that's not important, this is a little pot, this is a holly leaf, it doesn't really matter uh, at this stage for me, because really it's all design. And that's really the first thing people see from across the room. They're gonna see a design, they're gonna see those negative spaces, you're going to see patterns of light and dark and color. And, you know, that's going to be before they've even analyzed it. So, yes, the end product will be recognizable as holly and a little, uh, you know, teal thing, <laughs> a little teal cup. It's not really about that. It's about how does this design and this color scheme and these, uh, and these uh, design elements work early on. So right now it's just the drawing. It's nice that I'm not negotiating color at the same time because I'm going to erase things. I'm just going to wipe them right out and do a better version. So um, this stage is, is going to be about designing the painting that I uniquely want. And if it's a commission, then the, the painting my client really wants. And a lot of times I'll leave the mistake, see that leaf running off. I did not want that. And I was just going to let the rest of the painting kind of help me decide how how to fit these elements in so i'll make the correction from a place of understanding and relationships the other thing is i kind of assumed that these uh, leaves would be uh shifting on me and oh i was right so this painting had a lot of difficulties in that my subject was moving uh i had a lot of trouble with getting my uh, youtube feed going and I, I finally figured it out but i was really flustered uh, on top of that, I just completely sleep deprived. I forgot how to sleep again. Happens. And, and then at some point near the end, I dropped the whole painting and it just blah, it just streaked through so much already established stuff and I had to do a repair. So I had, a, I had some challenges with this one that were beyond just the artistry. But uh, I'm happy to share those with everybody. I, wanna, I want everyone to understand that, you know, paintings... Paintings are going to have challenges. They're going to have things that you don't expect. And even with a ton of experience, it doesn't always move from start to finish in a linear fashion. You've got to make decisions on the fly. You've got to make um, problem solving. And there are a lot of artists out there that are really good at you know, accuracy. There's some others that are really, really good with creativity. Others with expression. Others with color use or edges or... Uh, whatever, right? Uh, I think as an artist, my specialty is problem solving, and that really translates into, you know, mentoring students because ah, that's really what teaching art is about. You can give all the fundamentals, but the application is experiential. So, uh, really, you can say all the right things, and you can read all the right books, and watch all the right videos, but until you've done it a million times and you've had that sort of expert saying, look, I've been through this situation, this is how you apply this fundamental or that. That's, that's, uh, that's where I excel as a, as a creative. So, uh, and there's other, you know, fantastic artists that are the same way that, you know, that's their strong suit too, or maybe they do a lot of things super duper well. But I'd say of all my artistic abilities, and I've, I've achieved a lot in the art world, um, that's probably my strong suit. There we go. Finally got the whole thing uh, blocked in, and now I'm just going to do big color fields. I'm painting on raw 
aluminum. I did not score it first, so if I had sanded it first, I would have had a, a nice texture to grab the paint. But I didn't go that way because I wanted it to be really smooth. I didn't want tracks of sandpaper, so. And I didn't want to really get like super polishing sandpaper and spend forever doing it. So I'm painting on a slick surface. This uh, paint did not have anything to absorb into. And so I really like to go from that first stage is mass conception. There's just masses that occupy space. And that's really how abstract I wanted to keep it. And I, I sort of talked about that before. But then it was about abstract simplification. So this stage was already simpler than I normally start because abstract simplification is really the uh, the genuine patterns that I see when I squint when I eliminate all the busyness and all the subtle stuff runs together this was all about really big flat shapes and the reason is because I wanted that first round of paint to settle a little bit to kind of set up and get dry a little and my oil has a siccative in it, it has it's cooked with lead so uh, it's drying and setting up. So now I can finally get into what I was showing here is uh, that second round of modeling where I can layer paint on top of paint. Well, when it's an oil slick, that's hard to do. Uh, it really requires a single brush stroke, no futzing around. And um, not only did I incorporate that technique, but I also, you know, just did a timing, you know, based on experience. I just said, you know, if I just block it in as simple as possible. It'll set up a little bit. I'll just block in the other things, let them set up a little bit, and then come back in with a layer of paint on top of that you know, stickier, drier paint instead of uh, an oil slick. So now it's just refining edges and things. I'm thinking of five values. Each leaf has highlight with a light, turning shadow, reflected light, cast shadow. Same thing with the pot. Same five elements and it's all about edges and decision making because my holly had radically shifted by the time I got to this stage. And I'm just kind of making it up, but I'm basing it on how light hits those leaves, even if they're in a different position, I can apply it to my drawing. Uh, and then finishing touches. So sometimes you want to finish without the subject because at the end of the day, you're not compare, you're, the viewer isn't going to compare your painting to the still life setup. They're not going to see the still life setup. It's got to appeal to their life, to their uh, built-up sense of observation and realistic depth. It's got to appeal to them on that art artistic level, too. How does this color read against this other color? How does this light read against that dark? Is there a harmony to the story of the light, which is a direction, intensity, and color of the light? And if all three are harmonious throughout the entire painting, then it invites people into this realistic space. Uh, finishing touches, I, I'll finish it as if I'm approaching, I'm walking into the gallery, I've never seen the setup, I'm seeing the painting raw for the first time from that viewer's perspective. And what does my first impression say? Well, if there's something that bothers me from the first impression, I better take it seriously. So that the knee-jerk reaction might not be the right solution, but I know I have to address this relationship problem. Is it color? Is it light? Is it edges? Is it proportion? And I can consider multiple factors for making the right choice. And then, you know, I finish it up. At some point, I was super tired. I haven't been sleeping all week. And this is already running into, you know, almost four hours with all the technical trouble I had early on. And I was just tired. It, you know, that's a factor. So a la prima has to end sometime or else, you know, it's, it doesn't have that spontaneity of, of a la prima. I just decided, okay, this is the point where it's done. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you tune in for some other uh, still life demonstrations. I like still life because I'm painting from life and it's late at night. So, uh, you know, I do figure demonstrations too, but, you know, with usually those are nude figures. So posting it on social media can be a little tricky, but uh, I'll post some of those too. I'll just put enough warnings on there. And then landscape, uh, not a great season right now for doing plein air landscape and, um, uh, I'll probably do a few from photos that I can post too. But uh, yeah, stay tuned. I hope to tune in. Uh, I love feedback, so just uh, drop me a comment. Thank you.